Hello my hungry friends! Today we're making wild game stew. Gulasz Dziczyzny. Welcome back friends! This is Polish Kitchen, my name is Anna and here together we're gonna cook up some Polish food again. And today I'm gonna cook up some wild meat. Wild game. game. <laughs> I'm using wild boar and this particular piece is ham, but you can use venison, any wild game that you like. And today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine subscription founded by two MIT grads who wanted to help people discover wines they love. All you have to do is take a less than 30 second quiz and the algorithm matches you with the wines you're guaranteed to like based on your taste profile. Each personalized wine comes with an educational card that provides serving and pairing tips. The more you rate and give feedback on your wines, the better your matches get. Plus our delight guarantee means that if you don't love a bottle in your shipment, Bright Sellers will send you a replacement in your next box. Wines are packaged in totally sustainable and recyclable packaging, plastic free with small footprint box. Bright Sellers is giving our followers 50% off their first six bottle order. So we'll go ahead and click the link below, take a quick quiz so they know what kind of flavors you like and you're gonna get it in no time right at your door. We're gonna use some um, for our recipe today. And as you saw, they come with these gorgeous little cards. You can keep them for, uh, for later and you can refer to the cards to see what kind of wine you're using. I chose the Syrah uh, because of the, pro the flavor profile on it. It's got some blackberry and black currant and plum and clove. And I wanna carry those flavors into our, our stew today. So I'm, so I'm using this wine for my recipe. Shall we get started? We should. We but should get started. First of all, uh, when you call it a ham, most people in the States think of a ham as a cured piece of meat or a already salted and cooked piece of meat. So that, what part of the pig is that? Uh, so this is leg. Okay. Leg, this would be ham leg. Yay? Or no? Yes, it yeah. is. This is part of the leg. I'm just making but, sure. But uh, venison... You don't by a ham is my point. Like smoked. Right. No, no, no. We're doing raw. We're starting from raw meat. And um, you can also do any, any really stewing part of the wild animal or you can do loins you can really any, any piece i just that 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 will this is what was available so i got this and they also had uh packages of stew meat but it didn't specify what it was so i kind of i wanted to know what i'm buying so i bought a piece of ham uh so uh first we're gonna do we're gonna i'm gonna start heating my pan a little bit so I'm gonna start heating this, and this is one of those dishes that you can kind of start ahead of time and put it in your uh, crock pot even and cook it over many hours as you're working or doing whatever. Uh, I'm gonna use my cast iron today because I like it and I like how it kind of keeps the heat. So I'm heating a couple of tablespoons of oil and I'm using, I like to use, um, what you call it? Grape seed, because uh, it has high heat. Uh, a high smoking point. Yeah, that's why I like it. It doesn't burn as fast. So cut it into chunks, however big you want. I like them kind of, I guess on the smaller side, kind of bite, bite sized pieces. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot to the meat before I throw it in my, in my pan because most of the flavor and most of the magic is gonna happen while, uh, once we add all of our uh, spices. And I have all kinds here today. And um, I guess you could go several ways with it, but this kind of seemed, I wanted to use kind of traditional spice, Polish spices, so that's why I'm using this, this combination.
hot pan. I'm just going to add this meat into, right into the pan. And I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my hands. And I'm going to do a sprinkle of salt. Probably about a teaspoon. And we'll adjust our salt later. And <laughs> I want to do a sprinkle of pepper, which we can adjust later as well. And did I say I have about a pound of meat here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is going to start browning. For us, let's give this a little stir. And if you were to cook this in the crock pot, you would start by searing your meat a little bit. I'm going to move my dishes a little bit. And then we would add the onion. And I hate cutting onions on camera because I'm always crying. But we'll see how it goes today, huh? So I have two kind of small onions. I'm just kind of rough chopping it. No big deal. These will, by the time this is done, these onions will be gone anyway. You won't see them. So just kind of rough chop. And I have, this is going to be a super aromatic stew. I have, um, I have some Jupiter. And for you, for those of you who don't know what Jupiter is, what? Juniper. Juniper. Ju I say Jupiter, like the, Jupiter, uh, like the planet. Like the planet. Yeah, no, Juniper. <laughs> Jupiter. Jupiter berries. <laughs> uh, those are right here. Those are tiny, kind of uh, dark purple berries. And they are kind of fruity and a little bit of peppery. And there goes the onions, and kind of piney. We use them a lot in um, we use them a lot in sausage making Poland. So I'm um, just crushing my garlic a little bit. Th this will kind of disintegrate as well. I can't see. My eyes, <laughs> Stop my, uh, my eyes are all. If you can't see, I'm okay. I'm okay. Head. I'm okay. So these are giving uh, out a little bit of uh, liquid. This is when you come and show the people how the liquid is coming out. <laughs> I'll bring the heat up just a little bit to get the browning process started a little bit. And to our, uh, to our pan, I'm gonna add the onion I've just chopped up and the go crushed garlic I just kind of barely sliced it into big chunks and give this just tiny stir and first I'm adding I have prunes two four I have seven grab some doesn't really matter and I'm gonna just give these also a rough chop and these will give our stew a nice sweet flavor and kind of break up the gaminess of the dish these go in and now our spices so not Jupiter juniper berries this is called Jałowiec in Polish uh, kind of sweet I think I want to break these up a little bit a little bit sweet and citrusy uh, kind of very aromatic I have uh, probably about half a tablespoon and I'm just gonna crush these lightly just to get the flavor out that's it good enough and these will go into our stew and uh, another kind of maybe unusual spice that I'm putting in is whole cloves and I want these to come through in our stew a lot so I got a good good heavy pinch of whole cloves Give these let these go get in there and start releasing some of their aromatics and it wouldn't be just Polish stew without the trio. So this is allspice berries whole, uh, black pepper, and three, um, three bay leaves. And these go in one, try to escape. 
And I, I, you may have seen, you may have just saw these pickles here. Yeah, <laughs> that's for later. We're not adding them into the stew just yet. So this is st starting to uh, release some of the juices the meat is, and now the juices are evaporating a little bit and becoming a little bit drier. I don't have to sear this meat, and sometimes it, it's a little hard with, with so much water being released from, from the stew. Uh, so this is okay by me. Um, now this needs to cook in a bunch of liquid. So I'm adding, I'm gonna start with a cup of water. You can do broth as well, or a beef broth, or a vegetable broth, or whatever you have on hand. And I'm also gonna add this beautiful wine in a second. Um, and as I mentioned before, the, this one has all these kind of uh, very interesting notes to me. This clove in there and plum and black currant. I love those to come through in kind of gamey and meaty flavors. I'm also going to add, I have two carrots and a peeled parsley root. So I'm just going to slice these. And these will also go in, and all of this will add layers of flavor to our stew. Give this tiny stir, and now the wine. This is nice and red. So <laughs> what I came in Poland, is, it, uh, is this a hunting nation, like, like where I'm from back in Wisconsin? Um, so it, it is a hunting nation, although not in the same magnitude, I should say. Hunting uh, in Poland is very, very regulated, as is gun ownership. Um, so if you want to go hunting, you have to jump through some hoops. In order to get a hunting license, you have to go through some hoops and do a bunch of training, uh, be part of a hunting club, and um, you can't go just hunting on your own, you have to have people with you and someone always watching over your shoulder, kind of, so it's very regulated. So um, I'm using drinking wine for cooking because <laughs> flavor matters and it'll come through our, our stew, so I want to make sure this is good, right? Well, yeah, we got to test product. Mm. I want to test it. It's nice and dry. I like dry wine. So you're going to uh, use about a, right? Ooh, I, can I, like taste, I can taste the clove in it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use about a cup. And um, the wine will cook off, obviously, but it's going to give us this rich color and flavor, and it's going to make things so much more tasty. If you don't like cooking with wine, you can just uh, double your liquid, uh, whatever you're using, either broth or, um, or water. So if you come and look here now, it's quite soupy. And that's what we want. You now you want this gorgeous mixture of flavors to sit here as long as it needs to uh, kind of make your meat soft. So this will depend on what meat you're using. Um, I think venison would probably take a little less time than boar, wouldn't you think? I, I would think so, but all, all wild game is very lean and usually a little bit more tough. So parts of it, yeah. parts of it. If you're using a loin, maybe not as long. <coughs> part of the leg or something like that, rib bone area meats, those will be a little bit harder. Yeah, so um, turn this down to low and cover it. I have my cover right behind me. and. Um, let it stew for at least 45 minutes and then taste your meat and I mean we'll come back and we'll finish this off but let it cook on low or if you're cooking in a crock pot set your crock pot to uh, low or high depending on how long I guess you're going to be cooking it and just let it cook and then we'll come back in a little while and check on the tenderness and check on our stew. Aloha! Yes yeah, so we've been cooking for a while my boar, my wild pig, has been cooking for about two hours. And the liquid evaporated a little bit, so I uh, replenished with about uh, 
two cups. I added a cup at a time and kind of cooked off a little bit and I add a little bit more because I like the I like it sassy. I like your it's too sassy. Mr. Hernan. Oh, I do, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> sassy, 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 In the meantime, I've also cooked some kasha, some uh, grains, and I'm using bul bulgur, bulgur today uh, because it's kind of mild in taste and because the stew is kind of uh, robust and it's got very defined flavors, I didn't want to add another kasha like um, buckwheat. For example, is very uh, pungent, right? And um, it will add another flavor, and that's okay if that's what you like. But I wanted kind of a mild background for this uh, very d delicious and strong tasting stew. I think uh, if you come if you come to Poland, which I hope you do, stew like this would often be served with uh, potato dumplings, uh, the ones we call them. Kluski Śląski z dziurką, which means uh, Silesian dumplings with a hole. And they're the round, flat ones with kind of a dimple. So if you put them on your plate and then you pour sauce over it, the dimple kind of fills with the sauce and it's all nice and delicious. And I think this also would go great with a side of red cabbage, uh, braised red cabbage. So if, you wanna, if you're looking for, for an idea, and that's also at poshukitchen.com. Please click subscribe as you're there. <laughs> All right, uh, shall we? We're just gonna taste it to see if it needs a little bit more salt. Mm. So, so far I've done about half a teaspoon. I think I'm gonna add another half a teaspoon and um, I can, taste the flavors that we've added to it. Definitely the cloves and the uh, juniper berries. But I feel it needs a little bit of sharpness. And by sharpness, I don't mean spicy as uh, spicy peppers give you, but I like spiciness from ground, pep uh, ground black pepper. Cause it's, it's like a, sh it's sharp flavor, not only spicy. So I'm gonna make this or on the spicier side and add, what's this? Like a teaspoon? <laughs> half a teaspoon. Oh. But it's gonna be like a full half a teaspoon. So hopefully the child won't mind. And give this a stir. And look at how rich in color it is. It reminds me of Chernina, the blood, the duck blood soup, uh, right? <laughs> from, from the wine. And I wish it didn't. <laughs> you don't like it? I don't like charnina, no. Yeah, I know. Now, if you wanted a thicker stew, how would you thicken this? Yeah, what so you could you could thicken it with uh, flour and water mixture. So you could do uh, probably like a uh, quarter, a third of a cup of uh, cold water, a couple of tablespoons of all-purpose flour, shake it up in a jar for a while, get rid of the clumps, and add it to your stew, bring it up to boil or thicken a little bit. But I, I also find that that dilutes the flavor a little bit, the flour does. So I'm not gonna do that. I think our stew is ready. I'm gonna get a nice spoonful right over, right next to our kasha. And as all the stews in Poland, we serve them with a nice side of pickle, which you may find if you also come and visit us sometime the tanginess of the of the pickle goes nicely with this kind of stewy stewy stew. You know, I found that to be a very odd side when I first mm -hmm. moved here, but it's perfect. Mm -hmm. The pickle is perfect mm. with with it. Yes, I mean, you're mouse watering. It is. <laughs> oh, I can definitely taste the uh, the herbs, not the herbs, but the spices we added, the ju juniper berries are and I love the clove that comes through here. It's kind of sweetness from uh, the plums, the dried plums, the prunes, and uh, actually a little bit of the wine as well comes through. I love it. Very sophisticated dish. Um, even would be great for a Sunday dinner. 
I hope you try it. I hope you check out uh, Bright Sellers. Never have to shop for wine again. They'll come right to your door. Uh, if you head over to my website, poetrykitchen.com, please be sure to subscribe and come see us again here on the YouTubes. And we'll see you next time. Smash and go.